We're at Timna Park here in the south of Israel, and we're speaking with Allison, who is one of the guides here at a really incredible place. This is, as far as we know, a two-scale model of the tabernacle built by Moses in, in the ex during the time of the Exodus. During the time of the Exodus, yes. Okay, and we're talking to scale approximately in feet or meters. What is, what's the, the size of the outer area of the tabernacle? Okay, so the outer courtyard was 100 by 50 cubits of the cubit, and this is built on a 50 centimeter cubit. So okay. it's more or less the size. Okay, so we can actually walk through the tabernacle area. Yes, Let's you're do most that. welcome. I yeah. would love to go through this. Oh, wow. It, it's larger in here than I thought it was gonna be for some reason. I, I, I just spent uh, weeks going through the entire Torah, you know, and reading all, all the details, and make it this big and this wide. And the first thing I'm struck by is this here, which is, which is the altar. Yeah, five by five and three high. It's true, that's when I first came here, it was like, wow. <laughs> it, it was before that, it's just figures in your head. Yeah, yeah. And once you come here, it's like, now you can picture it and actually see what they had, um, what the priests and Levites would have seen. Yeah. Well, the second item after the altar, of course, was the wash basin for okay. cleansing. And of course, the altar had wooden base with copper, but this was pure copper with no wood. And of course, living, running water was kept in here. Very important living Very water. Important. Yeah. When I read through the book of Exodus and Leviticus, and you get through all of the descriptions of the sizes and everything, it's really hard as a North American or anyone outside of this land, you know, to really put it in your mind how large things are. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was saying to you, this, this thing must have been really, really solid and heavy to carry. Yeah, we don't have the size, but definitely we know they had a frame that they had to put underneath in order to be able to carry it. But all the items actually would have been heavy because it's not just the item, but this heavy animal skin that was over it as oh, well okay. because nobody was allowed to look at any of the holy items as they traveled. Wow. I can't imagine how beautiful this would have looked because this is, you know, obviously fake gold. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But in the time of the Bible, when God instructed them to build this, these were like, these were solid slabs of, so, of gold, oh, or oh, face. Panels, yeah, faced yeah. panel gold, yes, yes. I mean, when the sun hit it right, it must have been just absolutely Amazing. stunning. It's unimaginable. Unimaginable. Right? Well, in here we have three main elements, and maybe mm -hmm. we could start here with this table. What, what would this be? This was the showbread table. It was acacia wood covered with the gold, and of course had the 12 unleavened breads, representing the bread of presence in the Bible, it's called before God's face. Of course, in the New Testament, it's mm -hmm. quite clear in John that this represented Messiah, right. the bread of life. Okay, so that's that's the table of showbread. And then here we have the menorah. Right. And I think most people would know what it represents, but maybe you could just tell us real quick okay. what it represents. Also, it has no wood and no measurements, so we don't know the actual size at oh, all. Okay. It's not, it, it, they were just told to build a uh, menorah from a solid piece of gold to seven branches okay. with the oil lamps along the top. So we know the description but not the size. Okay. So like the altar outside, this had to burn all the time. It's all the, the time. eternal flame. So every evening and morning they'd have to refill the oil and trim the wicks because it had to keep burning. Okay. So there's actually two major meanings in this. Of course Christ said he's the light of the world, this right. is the only light. But then in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, you have the seven spirits of God, or right. attributes mentioned. And again in Revelation, we see it three times mentioned, the seven spirits of God. So if this is a representation of God's Holy Spirit, again, it's interesting, mm. no measurements. Okay. So it's, uh, and of course, a lot uh, along with water in the word, oil and spirit okay. are often interchangeable. Okay, so we have uh, the showbread, we have the menorah, and then we come to this final piece here, the we call it the altar of incense yes, in English, or golden is that altar. correct? Yes, it's correct. It's either the altar of incense or the golden altar, because the other one, of course, was copper. And of course, again, though, it's acacia wood covered with gold, and the coals could only come from the altar outside, because oh, okay. they were paid for by the blood, and mm. it was God who started that fire originally. So again, every evening and morning, hot coals and a special mix of incense. Uh, very good, okay. And then we come to, to the final stage, mm -hmm. the, the final curtain, and when we go through there, we see the Holy of Holies. Is, yes. Okay. Oh, wow, again, to see it like this in its life size, man, it, it's, it's just, it's larger than I thought it was, it was going to be. Mm. So this is the final place. This, this is the is holy the, place. The holy this, of holies, yes. And, and this, okay, mm -hmm. so again, all the people are camped outside. Mm -hmm. Only the, the Levites, not only, but the Levites would minister in that outer area. Yes. 
and the priests and the high priests, if he wanted to, would minister in this area with the showbread, the menorah, and the altar of incense, but only the high priest, one day a year, could come into here, right? Yeah, only on Yom Kippur, and only dressed in white. He didn't okay. wear his, every day he wore his um, high priestly garments in the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. On Yom Kippur, he dressed only in white. Okay. And he would first have to bring incense to make a smoke, because he's expressly entering God's presence. Wow. So it said, lest he die. First mm -hmm. the incense, Amazing. and then the blood, first for the go, uh, the bull for him, and then the goat mm -hmm. blood for the nation of Israel. Okay, and then is it okay to slide this back yes, to yes. show everybody? To show what okay. was inside. So of course the stone tablets of the law were in here. Now these are the actual Ten Commandments, right? <laughs> yes, in modern Hebrew, in <laughs> concrete. <laughs> <laughs> Concrete and modern Hebrew. Okay. So, and we don't know the size. Of course, right. they had to have been small enough to fit in size, or inside the ark that we do know. Okay. You know, as we were walking through this, Allison, a real clear picture started started to form. Uh, there was three distinct, you know, gates or, or curtains that we had to pass through. Mm -hmm. um, now, I've heard this before, but I've never been able to really, you know, uh, not to prove it, but to get you know any teaching behind it. We had to come in through the first gate, and then it was a second gate, and then it was a third gate, and then mm -hmm. before you know it, you're in God's presence, you're in the Father's presence. Mm -hmm. now, now Jesus in the New Testament, he says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, and no one can get to the Father unless he comes through me. And we mm -hmm. see the altar of sacrifice right smack in the middle. Mm -hmm. Do you think, or are we pushing it to say that Jesus might have been, you know, kind of digging, kind of referring the Pharisees back to the tabernacle of Moses? They knew exactly what he was saying when, when he said this. So yes, you know, it's very clear that he referred to this coming through these three curtains. And of course, they perfectly well knew the order of the holy items yeah. and the progression of coming back to the Father and the duties connected with each one. You know, and we see this and time and time again when we read the Bible, if we don't, any guys, you're gonna get sick of hearing this. I say this almost every week. To understand Yeshua, Jesus, we need to understand the Hebraic background, you know, the Hebraic mm -hmm. culture, the world in which he lived. And as Christians, it's so sad sometimes, we've lost a lot of the, the pictures, the, the beauty of his teachings because we've kind of thrown out the baby with the bathwater and because of some of the anti-Semitism and some of that replacement theology that's coming to the church, we've thrown it away. But this is a clear example of how Jesus used the religion of the day, the expectations of the people of the day. Mm -hmm. And he says, I am the way, you know, I'm the truth and I'm the life. And if you want to get into the presence of the Father, then you've got to come through me. And when he says that, I mean, here's this honk and this huge altar of sacrifice right in the middle. And Allison, I want to thank you for, for taking time. I know we could have spent hours here going oh, yes. through this. And this is just a tease, uh, just a little taste of what you can have if you're able to come with us one time on our trips to Israel, you can easily add an extension onto a lot, and this is not even a half hour uh, from a lot. You can come here, you can go through the whole tour, which is what, about 40 minutes about or so? About 40 minutes. And, and not just the actual teachings, but you can also get the symbolic teachings and how Christ fulfills mm -hmm. all these elements of, of the tabernacle. So I would encourage you to join us here on a tour of Israel, and God willing, if you're able, uh, to come and see this tabernacle for yourself.